Wood has been the backbone of shelter, engineering, warfare and survival for thousands of years. It's held up ships against salt water, supported mines deep underground, and framed barns that are still standing after a century. Yet most people today treat wood like a disposable material, cheap, temporary and unpredictable. But history tells a different story. Whether you look at frontier cabins that survived brutal winters, medieval beams that still hold up roofs, or Cold War bunkers reinforced with treated timbers, the secret wasn't luck. It was knowledge. Practical, methodical, no-guesswork wood preservation that turned a vulnerable organic material into something stable, resilient, and capable of surviving decades of moisture, insects, fungi, and mechanical stress. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how our ancestors preserved wood, why certain methods lasted longer than others, and how you can apply these same principles to your homestead, workshop, or emergency projects today. Long-term wood care begins with understanding moisture movement rather than fighting it. The biggest mistake modern builders make is believing that wood should be kept completely dry, sealed or suffocated with thick finishes. But historically, wood lasted longest when builders controlled moisture rather than trying to eliminate it. Ancient shipwrights, for example, knew that wood swells, contracts, pulls in moisture, and releases it. They built with joinery that allowed movement, coatings that repelled liquid water but still let vapour escape, and designs that prevented water from pooling. For practical application today, the lesson is simple. If you're building a shed, outdoor furniture, or even storing lumber long-term, ensure airflow on all sides. Elevate wood off the ground with stones, bricks, or rails. Leave small ventilation gaps so humidity can move through rather than being trapped. Preventing trapped moisture is the number one step for long-term preservation, and it costs nothing but awareness. Historical preservation relied heavily on oils and resins because they penetrated deeply and moved with the wood. Linseed oil, pine tar and resin-based mixtures were used for centuries because, well, they didn't create brittle skins. They soaked into the grain, pushed out water and filled capillaries where fungi and insects would normally thrive. The Vikings coated their ships in pine tar. And you know, frontier farmers used raw or boiled linseed oil mixed with turpentine. Even 20th century utility poles were treated with creosote for the same reason. Deep penetration equals long-term stability. To apply these methods today, just warm the wood slightly in the sun, brush on an oil mixture and reapply after the first coat disappears into the grain. You'll notice that on old beams or weathered planks, the first two coatings vanish quickly. This is the wood drinking what it needs to resist decay. These traditional oil-based treatments remain some of the longest lasting, especially on timbers that won't be painted. Wood longevity dramatically increases when you break its connection to soil and standing water. Archaeological sites repeatedly show the same thing. Wood buried deep in wet clay survives centuries, but wood sitting in damp soil at the air boundary rots within a decade. The mistake is partial exposure. That's why pioneers set fence posts on stones, or, you know, they char the bottom sections to create a moisture-resistant carbon layer. 
Japanese builders used a technique called yakisugi, which means lightly charring the surface to repel insects and slow moisture absorption. To use this in a modern backyard, you can char the first few inches of fence posts, brush off the soot oil the burned layer, and then set the posts on gravel rather than directly into dirt. It's a simple process that might add, say, 20 minutes of work, but can extend lifespan from 10 years to 30 or more. Long-term wood survival is all about eliminating constant wet-dry cycling. Cold War and Industrial Era Preservation focused on controlled chemistry and environmental design. In bunkers, mines and tunnels, wooden beams outlasted expectations not because they were heavily coated, but because engineers controlled humidity, airflow and contact with wet surfaces. They created capillary brake layers using stone's asphalt or tar-coated cloth. They isolated wood from concrete because, well, concrete transmits moisture continuously, and they ensured slow, steady air movement to prevent condensation. These lessons apply directly to modern homesteads. Never let untreated wood touch concrete. Add a waterproof membrane or sill gasket. Maintain a small airflow gap behind siding instead of pressing boards tightly to walls. Build roofs and overhangs that shed water far beyond the structure. This isn't aesthetic design. It's moisture control architecture, the oldest and most reliable wood preservation method humans have ever developed. Insect resistance was achieved historically through saturation smoke and strategic drying. Many old barns and granaries still stand because their timbers were slow-dried over smoke-filled rafters, saturating the outer layers with natural insect deterrents. You know, others lasted because builders had chosen resin-rich woods like cedar, juniper or pine heartwood. Today, replicating this doesn't require smokehouses or historical tools. You simply need to finish wood with an oil that carries natural insect-repellent compounds, such as pine tar or cedar oil. Let it penetrate fully, then allow the surface to cure before applying a second coat. For stored lumber, keep it stacked with spacers, allow airflow, and avoid warm, stagnant environments where beetles thrive. Proper drying alone eliminates most insect issues before they start. Long-term preservation succeeds when methods are layered rather than singular. The biggest lesson from history is that wood survives longest when protected by multiple factors. Elevated from soil, ventilated, dried correctly, treated with oils, and shielded by smart design. No single trick ensures longevity. It's the combination that creates decades of resilience. Whether you're preserving a tool handle, maintaining a shed, or building something intended to outlast you, use at least two or three of the historical techniques described here. They compound one another, and that's why ancient timbers still hold up temples, while modern lumber sometimes fails in a few seasons. If you found this guide valuable, don't forget to subscribe to Thermal Vault and share this video with anyone serious about long-term building knowledge. The deeper we study historical craftsmanship, the better we build today, and the longer our materials last tomorrow.